There was a time when you didn't get your movie picks from Dean uh, or Rotten Tomatoes or the Internet. You wanted to see whether Siskel and Ebert gave it their signature two thumbs up. Matt Singer's new book, Opposable Thumbs, How Siskel and Ebert Changed Movies Forever, shares their origin story and how they went from rivals to frenemies. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. You know, I think uh, people don't quite understand how big these two guys were, and they were just newspaper columnists and how did it all begin they were they were rival uh, newspaper critics in chicago at the tribune and the sun times and they were doing that for years and and basically never spoke uh they had a very awkward contentious relationship and then in 1975 wttw thought they should do a movie review show and thought they would be the right hosts and uh Took a little while to get there. The early episodes that you can find online, they're, not, they're a little awkward at first, but they turned into this incredible uh, frenemies, I think you put it. That's probably well said. They were frenemies. What What do you think was uh, the, the key to that uh, success when they finally did uh, connect that way, Matt? Was it uh, the content of their reviews? Was it their sniping at each other uh, on air? Uh, they They didn't mind doing that at all. No, it was probably a combination of both. I think they were both good critics and they they did have uh, always interesting things to say. But that rivalry and that competition that came from their backgrounds fighting each other for scoops at the newspapers, I think, wound up being a huge asset on television because they brought this level of drama to the movie reviews because you didn't know what they were going to say. You didn't know who was going to get upset at the other. You know, if, yeah. if if they had been so similar, it would have been kind of boring if they were just, yeah, this was good. This was, yeah, that was not so good. That's not Siskel and Ebert. You know, they had this incredible, I'm just looking at the clips of how animated they are, even and you can't hear them. You right. can see how yeah. animated they were. And that was something they were so great at. And really prior to this, uh, a, a movie critic was a singular person. Uh, putting them together kind of set off this dueling critics uh, format that uh, in some cases still exists. That's right. Yes, it was. You know, it, there were film critics on TV before Siskel and Ebert, but it was like one person looking at the camera, giving their review and then saying, back to you, Joan, or whoever yeah. it was. And they really turned a, a monologue into a dialogue. And uh, at their height, when they would leave one show and start a new one, they would be replaced. There was like three different movie review shows on TV, all being shot in Chicago. It was mm. a really amazing time in the uh, in the mid-80s. Yeah. What, what didn't they like about each other, and how did they break through that? Was it a singular event, or was it something that just thawed over time? I think it was a thawing over time. I think it was that they both saw each other as, you know, competitors in the extreme, mortal enemies to an extent, you know, that they each were kind of the young critic in town at... at when they started in the 1960s and they were they were rivals they both wanted to be the best they both had that competition that spirit and so uh you know they they wanted to be number one but they were kind of always number one uh opposing one another and i think that was where the tension came from the title of the book is interesting you say they cha how siskel and eber changed movies forever how did they change movies forever well, that's a big topic. Uh, you could almost write a whole book about it, I would dare to say. But uh, in a minute, I mean, I think just the way that they influenced um, how we talked about movies, what movies were shown in theaters, what movies were popular, they could, by giving something two thumbs up, they could change a movie's fortunes, they could change a filmmaker's fortunes. I talked to director Errol Morris for the book, and he said, without Siskel and Ebert, I would not have a career. And he's a wonderful documentarian who's made so many great movies. He has a new movie coming out this fall, which I think they would have loved. Um, and he always credited them with really uh, giving him a, a career. So, you know, there's filmmakers that they helped to prop up uh, with their reviews. And there were filmmakers that are around today that were inspired by the show. I was inspired to become a film critic watching the show. Some filmmakers who are uh, very successful today were oh. fans of the show and inspired them to think about making movies. We were just uh, seeing some footage of when uh, Roger invited me to his house after he lost the ability to speak and he was doing everything on uh, computer. 
uh, to, to let me see how he was still uh, doing his job. He died in uh, 2013. Gene died in 1999. How do you think they would uh, exist in a world today with the Internet where reviews are everywhere instantly? Mm. It's a, it's a great question, and it was something I thought a lot about for the book. And I asked a lot of the people I interviewed, wh where would they be today? Would they be together? Would the show still be on the air? And I got a lot of different answers. Um, I sort of feel like perhaps the show, because TV has changed so much, may not be on the air. But I really feel like they, whatever else they would have been doing, they, they I feel like they still would be doing something together. And I just think... Um, you know, they would have really relished some of the opportunities they could have had. Like, can you imagine the Siskel and Ebert podcast? It would yeah. have been the, oh. the greatest uh, film podcast yeah. on earth. And, and they wouldn't have been constrained to talk for 22 minutes like they were on TV right. about right. four movies. They could have talked for an hour. They could have argued for an hour yeah. about, <laughs> about one movie. I, I think that would have been fantastic. So, uh, you know, that's, again, it's a huge topic. But I, I, to me, I think that they would have found ways to be relevant today, even on the Internet, for sure. Yeah, these guys uh, definitely taught all of us how to uh, analyze films and how to review f films. You can learn much more in the book Opposable Thumbs, uh, and you can find Matt on all the socials. Matt Singer, thank you so much for joining us. Really interesting. My pleasure. Thanks, guys.